you miss me? Uh, I missed you. Okay, people, welcome back to another Foosh Weekly. As always, I'm Robo, and oh, oh, I'm back from vacation. So much news to catch up on. Not as much as I thought there would be, but <laughs> more than enough, because the toy train stops for no man, not even Uncle Robo. Well, especially for me, because I'm usually at the caboose. I'm hanging off the very back end of the train, Wondering what's going on up at the dining cars and the engine and are you guys having fun up there? What, what's happening? <laughs> that's not a train, but that's okay. We always catch up somehow. I'm gonna speed through some things that are super old to y'all <laughs> that I came back going, wow, wait, that was last week. But you know I'm gonna ramble too. Essentially, let's get back to business as usual. Let's go all the way back to weekend before last where I had just posted the weekly to YouTube so of course that's when Medicom decides to do their double feature of Mafex action figure goodness. And they started off with Avengers Infinity War Loki. I don't know if we had hints that Loki was coming. He wasn't high up on my list, especially after they had teased that, oh, comic book X-Factor Cyclops. But it makes sense. It's been a while since they've hit us with some MCU. And admittedly, this does look good. It looks better than some of the other Lokis I have on the shelf, especially that figure arts. Oh, Bandai, you done me dirty. Comes with two head options, happy to see you and happier to see you, along with two sets of daggers and the test Act. But I'm more interested in the DC Batman Hush Huntress because, oh, that display is cranking up to 11. And to get it out of the way, yes, Medicom added some length to her shorty shorts. The hip articulation makes for a perfect spot to transition from skin to costume, but then that would have also left a cut right across the thigh, right in the big middle of flesh. But if that were the case, why didn't they do that to the biceps? You could see the cut right across there with costume hanging above it. Is this more WB tomfoolery trying to save us from ourselves? We can't be seeing too much skin tone on a action figure that's imported from overseas. Speaking of that, she's also missing her crossbow, which we kind of expected. <laughs> Triggered weapons bad, wailing on your enemies with a broomstick, perfectly fine. I'll probably end up stealing the uh, G.I. Joe classified series Snake Eyes movie Scarlet's crossbow because it looks about the right size and it'll fit in with the aesthetic of the Mafex figures. Because the weapon and upper leg situation isn't enough to make me skip this. Just look at that thing. It whew, Right off the comic page. It, ah. No Medicom. Don't forget about Robin. Both are about $80 scheduled for August of 2022, but you know what they say about Medicom. You can pre-order a Mafex in one hand and shit. NECA also continued their haunting Halloween reveals with the Gargoyles Hudson. Just a good looking figure. And I've said it before, I say it all the time, y'all get sick of me saying it, but I wasn't really invested in Gargoyles back in the day, but a good action figure, a good set of action figures, and a commitment to building that team out, oh, <laughs> That's tempting. Because Randy has tweeted that they have about 13 figures on deck. So it'll be an interesting toy fair next year. There's also our first look at the Universal Monsters Black and White Mummy and... It's not that much different. I didn't expect this because it was such a slight change in coloration. Just taking out some of those tints. But this is also good for people who prefer their TVs monochrome as opposed to color. There was also the Bella Lugosi Dracula tease. And if I didn't know any better, if I wasn't looking directly at NECA's Twitter, I would have thought this was a real human hand of somebody cosplaying as Dracula. Then honestly, I can't say much different about the full reveal of Dracula. Well, besides it not being a hand, it's an actual head. You know what I mean. But then probably my new favorite line from NECA, and that's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles crossover with Universal Monsters. Here's a size comparison with the currently solicited Raphael as Frankenstein's monster against a movie turtle and, oh, that's big. But they didn't stop there. To compliment Frankenraff, you get Leonardo as Igor. Leaked solicitations said hunchback, so I was expecting something slightly different, but not much. They even call this Igor the Hunchback. Still looks wacky and scary, fits into the set perfectly. There is also this back shot of the photographer taking pictures and the swords go directly into the shell. So, <laughs> yeah. By that logic, I want to guess that Donatello will be Dr. Frankenstein himself, but those leaked solicitations also listed Mikey as the mummy. So who knows where they're going? but it's, I, I like the surprise of it. Mezco also got in on the spooky solicitations with the 112th Collective Halloween 2 Michael Myers. I don't know much about Halloween. I wasn't into horror movies when I was a kid, but I can pick Michael Myers out of a lineup. That's really all that matters, right? I mean, who was the guy that slowly chased you down the street? It was that guy. 
So if the jumpsuit color is slightly off or one of the cracks in the mask is in one place rather than the other, I can't tell you that. I mean, that's for the experts to decide. To me, this looks like a nice action figure of Michael Myers. Don't shoot the messenger. I especially like the blonde spiky hair head like Guy Fieri decided to roam the streets as Michael Myers. Comes with a couple of light up jack-o'-lanterns, hands, heads, steak knife, and hammer. $85 supposed to release sometime next fall. But again, pre-order Mezco in one hand. Diamond Select has released concept art for their upcoming Marvel Select Apocalypse and oh, if you're a Marvel Legends collector who likes to take the larger selects and shove them into your display, but if you're a hardcore select collector, selector, that doesn't work, uh, here's a new X-Men villain for your shelf. Funny how that works out. Hmm. Either way, it's gonna be interesting. Pre-order pages for the Mattel Masters of the Universe Masterverse Revelation Deluxe Triclops have been updated with official promo images, and oh, it just reinforces the fact that I love Techno Pope Triclops. It's just something different. It's, it's recognizable as Triclops, but it puts him into a higher position. But if you're more of a fan of the classic look, and who isn't, it doesn't mean I hate this, there's this option too. That's why it's a deluxe set. It's deluxey. Also, look out, he can do that age-old expert swordsman move of swinging the sword above his head while balancing on one leg. It's indefensible, but Mattel makes up for it with a nice outside shot, some atmosphere to it. Mattel, do more of this. $35 due out in January. From one deluxe to another, it seems that the McFarlane toy spawn, she spawn, wasn't held back from the rest of the wave because she's exclusive, like I speculated, but it's because that it comes in a bigger box with extras. Hey, I'm more than willing to admit when I'm wrong, especially when it works out in our favor. It's a general release that's up for pre-order everywhere. That just means more plastic for more people. She doesn't seem quite as deluxe as Wave 1's clown, being just a standard action figure with more weapons than the average bear. Uh, the package looks sparse, but then again, you can take some of those weapons and kind of sneak them over to your DC shelves. Ah, <laughs> see where you're going, Todd. Cygor was also passed over in those initial pre-orders, but only because he's a mega fig. Well, do they usually do that in other properties? Split up the deluxe and mega figs from the standard figures? I don't know, <laughs> but this is his baby. He can do whatever he wants. But why wouldn't he be a mega fig? Look at this big honking chunk of cybernetic gorilla action figure. I do this a lot, justifying a purchase, but even if you're not into Spawn or Cygor himself, this can terrorize any shelf in your room. Grod Lackey, a Jedi Arena Beast, <laughs> a Cobra experiment gone horribly wrong. It's toys, sky's the limit, or even further than that if you want to go there. She Spawn is $40, Cygor is $50, the hyphens are free, and they should release sometime in January. Super 7 has also been busy little bees, revealing not one, but two Ultimates! Hey, I told you it was changing. Don't come crying to me. Go line to super seven they were the ones that named the line with all caps and an exclamation point Shh, it's okay you know i love you first up silverhawks wave two you know the usual song and dance robo don't know a thing about silverhawks in fact i barely remember anything about silverhawks it's crazy that this is not in my brain somewhere it's almost like i've been men in black flashy themed but you put a cowboy hat on anything my ears perk up look at that wave two is bluegrass Steel Will, Shoulder Lasers, Shoulder Lasers, Pre-Transformation Monstar, and Windbreaker. Windhammer? Wind, Windhammer. And then to finish it off is Monstar's Transformation Chamber Throne. So many toilet jokes come to mind. <laughs> Trans Chamber Throne. $55 a piece except for the throne. That's $45. But it's good that it's a separate option. It is there for people who want it. But if you don't want it, it doesn't make Pre-Transformation Monstar like a double deluxe, like double the price because it comes with the throne and the figure. But that's not all from, oh, mm -hmm. Ultimates! G.I. Joe Wave 2 is a pair of Square Dance partners with Destro and Baroness and then Flint and Lady J. These are all so cartoony. It's, it's scary. It's, it's odd almost to see them in 3D form. This seems to be some people's jam, other people's not so much, but that's okay. There's options out there. There's at least two larger scale G.I. Joe lines on the market at the moment. <laughs> we are living in a golden age, my friends. Destro is appropriately armed to the teeth, and I love that cartoon accurate laughing head. <laughs> Flint also has several head options, the iconic shotgun, and of course a shovel, because everyone needs a shovel. Lady J of course comes with her spears, and there's even one where you can 
flip out several, several different tips. With a few comic and toy inspired items spread out sporadically through these four figures, I would have liked to have seen a ball cap for one of Lady J's head options. And then Baroness decked out in blue, which makes sense because Super 7 is pulling from their earliest appearances in the cartoon. I've seen some comments of her shape and, and doing a quick overlay, she's the same width and taper as Lady J, just a tad taller. Also seeing as how the pre-order page address specifically lists blue, can we expect a black variation at some point? We can because Brian Flynn essentially confirmed that on the Fooshcast that was posted this week. That segues beautifully into the surprise live stream Hasbro had just days after PulseCon where they showed even more reveals. For G.I. Joe, there was the Cobra Officer, which I, I really, 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 really dig the changes to the head and gear here. It makes them stand out from the rest of the troopers. This is also the mystery third figure that's in the wave with Storm Shadow and Spirit, so if you're wanting a whole set, pre-orders for that is now open. The Alley Viper was also revealed, which it's not really a surprise because it's been featured on the package art since the line debut, but I can't help it. I'm just happy to see this orange bastard in plastic form. But then, and remember, I was out of town, out of pocket, so I don't know how these events transpired, but somehow some people got orders in at Walmart for the Alley Viper and the standard issue bat. And they've already received their items, which caused kind of a panic. Oh, is this another Target situation? Have they already sold out at Walmart? But Emily from the G.I. Joe team assures everybody that this is going to be available. There will be more. So hold off on your eBay purchases. Do not freak out because things are upward and onward. <laughs> things are looking good on the G.I. Joe front. Let's keep that momentum going. Over on the Marvel Legends side of Hasbro Street, Lady Loki went up for pre-order this week. Originally available in the Toys R Us A-Force set, if you missed out on that, here's another chance. And you get that retro card on top of it. Ooh, nostalgia. Then during the live stream, the X-Men animated series Mr. Sinister made its debut. Same deal as Wolverine and Jubilee, cell shading to the paint job, give it a little bit extra oomph, and then a package that evokes the old VCR tape cases. Ryan made sure to emphasize that at some point in the future, you're gonna have a whole shelf full of these. So it seems like they're gonna go deep. But I think my favorite is Iron Spider, just because. I know this was available at some point in the past, and I skipped out on the amazing Yamaguchi. This is shiny. It's pin visible on the limbs. It's 20 some odd dollars. So yeah, this wins out for me. I'll be getting this. And then let's finish this whole thing off with Star Wars. Why? Because it's my show. I can do whatever I want. I'm just kidding. It seems Star Wars had the most reveals and news over the past two weeks. So here we go. Remember that Walmart exclusive Clone Wars shorts wave that went up for pre-order back in the summer where they didn't have pictures of the actual figures and yet they still sold out in about five minutes? We got pictures of those this week. So now we know what we already have on pre-order. How's that work? The Arc Trooper is mostly a repaint and not exactly accurate, but that's what this line does. It takes animated style designs and kind of shoves it into the real world so it'll match the rest of the Black Series collection. But I feel like General Grievous could have probably benefited from at least a few new parts. As is, it seems to be just a bright white paint job with some baby blue thrown in there. But for some reason I find it striking. I, <laughs> I don't know, I, I'm just a sucker. Mace Windu at least gets new forearms, new belt, and a shoulder piece on top. Hopefully these are available again because I was able to grab General Grievous and Art Trooper back in the summer. I missed out on Mace. And looking at these, <laughs> I think I want Mace the most. But that's how it goes, right? Then I first saw pics of the client from The Mandalorian over on Yak Face's Twitter. And again, a character that wasn't high on my list, even though I enjoyed his performance. But you give me anything from Mandalorian, I'm just gonna blah, 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 eat it up. I, I want them all. Same goes for Bad Batch. Omega. We knew she was coming, she was a pipeline reveal, and it, because she's a smaller character, I like that they filled her package up with other accessories like the bow, Ruby the lizard, and her mask. But I would have liked to seen an alternate head without the headdress thing, the chain coming across, because from what I remember, she was seen more like that than this. But hey, there's another chance to release her down the line. Yeah. But oh, we're finishing off the core team with Echo and 
mm, he looks good. I was wondering how they were going to make the helmet work since in the series that Lobot headgear kind of integrates itself into the helmet when he puts it on. But it looks like the toy helmet has an open back, slides over the front, and just much better than the Black Series tech missing his goggles because of the same cartoon physics at play. They pointed out that the Sakaar haircut attachment wasn't actually featured in the show, but I'm not going to grab about extras. It's a neat looking thing that I can imagine Echo using. And then from Rogue One, we get the Jetta Patrol Stormtrooper. I really like that new Stormtrooper mold, so I will take it in any form they want to give it to me. Throw the shoulder pad on, different hat, pack pack. If they want to dirty it up, sell me some more Sand Troopers, I'll do that too. All day. Every day. But as much as I love my Mandalorian and Bad Batch, and even Rogue One, my heart, or well, a lot of my heart, will always belong to the original trilogy. So seeing Bib Fortuna in plastic form, I ain't gonna lie, boys, it brought a tear to my eye. Sure, the blue is a little bit harsh, but oh man, the slight side eye and the hand gestures, perfect. Nucha! The only pre-order we saw this week, I think the only pre-order we saw this week, was for the retro-carded ceremonial Leia that we already knew about. They stated that pre-orders for the rest would go up at a later time to I can't remember how they worded it to make it easier to pre-order. But I have to think that's because of some backlash they were getting from either customers or retailers. For a while, they've been trickling out the releases. Two or three figures in a wave, those went up for pre-order. Then two or three more figures, those went up for pre-order. You either had to merge your pre-orders or cancel and then here. And then later, they would reveal the whole wave. That's when case pre-orders and set pre-orders went up. You would have to cancel try to merge it was kind of a mess I, it was a pain in the ass on the customer end it had to have been a mega fig deluxe pain in the ass on the retailer end basically i think they're going to here's the set now they go for pre-order then they said this wave would be available next summer <laughs> so of course we got in-hand pictures showing that these have already been produced the case will have bib fortuna ponda baba fennec shan mayfeld jetta patrol stormtrooper boba fett dr avazan and Ceremony Leia. And there it is. That's why the rest of this assortment hasn't been revealed yet. The Pulse exclusive Cantina set is shipping right now with Ponda Baba and Dr. Avazin. Then flipping back around to Ceremony Leia, the one that's up for pre-order right now on the Power of the Force card is more expensive than your standard release. Marketing! I can see making it available for those who missed out or want to skip the fancier versions, but to not tell, and I get it, we see this all the time. It's not out of the ordinary to do it this way, but I would like to know about other options available down the road. I mean, I got the Cantina set so I can skip on the regular versions. I guess that's a little money saved. But honestly, this is a hell of a case. It is eight unique characters pulled from more than a few corners of the Star Wars universe. And check out that pale green on Phoenix packaging. That is awesome. Oh, but it doesn't stop there. PulseCon weekend, they had a live stream. Several days later, they had another live stream. Why not have a fan first Friday the next week? But it does make sense. They are pushing their Rancor HasLab. So they wanted to show a little bit more than that. And when I say little bit, I, I mean little bit. They gave us a look at the physical sample, which is cool. It's a little bit more real in our eyes, but to not have one in hand on camera to show us what it looks like with a real person, this slow trickle, I don't know. They shut off the articulation and told us about the different materials. That's what the different grays are on the figure. But I think what everybody wanted to know is one of the stretch goals. So they gave us tier one with the Black Series Gamorrean Guard with a different hat. Don't get me wrong, I love my nostalgia packaging. This is awesome. The bigger coin is gonna be fun, but you don't start off with reuse. I mean, this is kind of the same situation as Silver Surfer over in the Galactus HasLab, but at least that had a few tweaks on the figure itself, and they showed that after a unique character, because I get it, one or two tiers is always gonna be a little bit more simple than the rest of the tiers, but... <laughs> Need some pizzazz. Need some oomph. Yeah, get this thing kicking. Make no mistake, I am confident that it will fund, and I've already backed for mine. But at the moment, it's just kind of... Yay. And that's all for this week. <laughs> it's like I always say, probably not. But if not, we'll swing back around next week, either Monday Foosh Live or the next weekly. If you're interested in seeing any of these pictures up close without me all, 
Yay. I'll be posting all of those along with links to pre-orders, more information on the Foosh Front page Saturday at noon. But if you're impatient, and I know you are because we're toy collectors, all the links are in the description. And we're not on track yet. I know I just got back from vacation, doing some traveling, checking out Denver Fan Expo, but next week, I'm gonna be going to AEW Full Gear. That means I'll still have a weekly, but I'm shooting it on Thursday. So if I miss some news, cut me some slack. <laughs> I'll be traveling once again. And then just like today, or this week, or the past two weeks, like I said just 30 seconds ago, we'll swing back around, we'll catch up. And it's funny because I was so afraid of breaking schedule. I can't miss weekly, it's been two years. I can't miss reviews. And I recorded a few of those to fill in the spots while I was gone. But I realized as I was gone and becoming more and more relaxed I was like well it's okay to miss every now and then right so I'm not gonna be missing completely but it's okay it's just action figures we can uh, talk about those anytime we want if you enjoyed this foosh weekly comment like subscribe much much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or in a position to help out the channel patreon.com but wherever you may be watching this I'll always catch you on Foosh. Oh, and I got a play day coming too. I got back and there was so much stuff in the mail, like tech goggles. I was just talking about those a minute ago. Can I get up close to the camera without it getting all crazy? Somebody 3D printed me some tech goggles and a data pad. So I'll be taking a look at that and a lot more stuff. Almost too much stuff. I won't be able to fit it into one play day, but we'll try our damnedest.